But praise me when that silence is the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are and claim your victory. Let it rise. Let praise arise. Good morning, everyone. I'm Diana Northcutt. I'm the pastor at Salem United Methodist Church, and this is October 4th, 2020. We're glad that you're here worshiping with us this morning. Please be sure to fill out your Connect card so that we know that you're here, and if you have any prayer requests, fill that out so we can be praying for you. As we come together this morning, let's be in an attitude of prayer. God, help me to realize that it doesn't matter what clothes people wear, how they cut their hair, or what color their skin is. We are all the same in your eyes, and with this, awareness of your children can move forward as a family. Discrimination deprives people of not only their civil rights, but their human dignity. To overcome the evil challenges of our life, we must turn to Christ, the good news of Jesus. Everyone deserves the love that you taught us to give to each other. I guess I'm petitioning you not only for miraculous solve, a problem but to allow for individual understanding of the violation against you and your world that blatant prejudice and discriminations commit. God, we just be with you this morning. We give you thanks for the blessings that we received this week, some that we know, some that we do not know. But God, we know that we come to you in a broken world. 
We pray for all the violence that's in this world. We ask continued prayers for those on the West Coast as they continue to fight forest fires and those in the Gulf ports that are trying to recover from the hurricanes that have devastated them over the last several weeks. We pray for the violence in the world that we may be able to put hands and feet on the ground to be able to help people understand and truly know what true peace is. We come to you today to pray for people in our congregations. We pray for Kathy. We pray for Emily. We pray for Sonny who has stage 4 cancer. We pray for Lynn and involve him in, in healing for his shoulder. For Holly as she prays for strength for her family and for Carla. We know, God, that there are many times in our lives when it's very difficult to us to bring prayers to you, and so we know that the gift of the Advocate, the coming of the Holy Spirit, will intercede for us. We ask, God, that those prayers be heard. We pray, O oh God, that you continue to be with our church and our staff as we work in areas that we've never worked before, that when the challenge comes to us, that we be able to face it knowing that you are with us. Give us the guidance and the direction that we need to do what you've called us to be. To be the church not only to our virtual family, but to our community gathered here at Salem. We pray all these things, God, and we ask that you join us in prayer as we pray the Lord's Prayer by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The last couple of weeks we've been looking at the Exodus story and how the Israelites deal with leaving Egypt. And their entering journey through the wilderness. And how this story really applies to us today as we live through the pandemic. Change has been forced upon us. Change that we did not want, change that we did not seek, yet here it is. So what can we learn from the Israelites that might make our journey easier? The Israelites sometimes lack the ability to listen to what God was telling them. You would think that when God he takes the Israelites out of, the, out of Egypt and into the Promised Land, that they would be eager to rush to possession. But the story tells us that on the cusp of something new, they got scared. And I'll often relating to getting scared about the decisions that the church has to make. In the 11th hour, we get so scared, we back away from what we were going to do, not willing to take the chance on something new and something different. Hear these words today as I read to you from, from Numbers chapter 13. Just prior to this, Moses had sent 12 spies into the land of Canaan to figure out what they were getting ready to walk into. When the spies return, two of them feel like it's let's go and 10 say no. Hear these words. At the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land. And they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregations of the Israelites in the wilderness of Panan and Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation. They showed them the fruits of the land. And they told them, We came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Yet the people who live there are strong, and the towns are fortified, and are very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of the Akonites. So the people came back, two saying that it was time to go into the promised land, and Ted said no. They came back with a mixed report. The land was exactly what God had promised them, but yet we know there were challenges. Reading on from verse 30, it says, But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the man who had gone up with him, we are not able to go against these people, for they are stronger than we are. So they brought to the Israelites an unfavorable report of the land that they had spied out, saying, The land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people 
we saw there were of great size. And we said to ourselves, it seems like we're grasshoppers as we seemed to them. This is the reading of God's word this day. Thanks be to God. It's true that when the 12 spies moved into Canaan, they did see cities that were fortified, and they do knew that there was going to be clear obstacles for them to face. But Joshua and Caleb felt that it was not something that could not be overcome, that they could win the land. In the end, Caleb and Joshua wanted to go for it, but the 10 of the spies didn't. If you read on into chapter 14, Joshua tells the people, Do not fear for the people of the land. They are no more than food to us. Do not fear. Do not fear. But the entire congregation wanted to stone Jacob and Caleb for telling them not to fear. They wanted to delay their trip into Canaan. They were going to spend more time in the wilderness because of their fear to move into something unknown. God becomes so angry with the Israelites, he tells Moses that he wants to destroy them. But Moses negotiates for the people of Israel not to be destroyed, because of what would it look like to other people that God had promised to bring the people out of, Israel, out of Egypt, only to destroy them. So in the end, God does not destroy the Israelites, but he does punish them. He tells them that they would never see the promised land. And so they enter into 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. They would not enter into the promised land until a new generation was brought up. When our churches are faced with a chance to finally do something new, to launch, and launch a new adventure, or maybe take the advantage of a new opportunity like we do now, we often get scared, don't we? Like the Israelites, it sounds good in theory, but when it's actually time to do something, we slow down. We want to study it, and we want to restudy it, and we want to table it, and we make all these excuses in the world to keep from moving forward into something that God has called us to do. We know what the challenges are. But are we willing to face those challenges today? Sometimes it's very important for us to do good planning because we don't want to run head on into the future without knowing what the commitment and the cost is going to be. But there is a fine line between good planning and stalling. Sometimes in our prayers and discernment, we're asking, we're actually masking a fear of moving forward that we're afraid to take the risk or trying something new in the church. We fear that we're not up to the challenge anymore, that we are inadequate or we don't have the resources. Sometimes it's just the fear of failing. In the end, the Israelites were afraid to enter the promised land. Their fear and inability to move caused them to spend 40 years wandering in the wilderness and the punishment of never being allowed to enter the promised land. It would be left to a new generation of Israelites to go and do what their parents would never do. In our lives, in the lives of the church, do we today have the courage to take the risk that we're being called to do, to step out and to live a life that God has inspired us to. To step into a new reality that at this time we do not know what it is, but to have the faith to let go of the past and to move into the future. Let's not spend our whole lives in ministry circling around the promises of God. I want you to stop for a moment. And if you have a pen and paper nearby, I want you to write down these questions and I want you to think about them, to ponder on them and to pray about them as we begin the entry of having live worship. Because these questions are going to be paramount to us, to what we do in the future. The first question is, what opportunities exist for our church today? 
The second question is, what fears do we have about trying something new? And the third question is, what is the cost of delaying or avoiding the change? I'll make sure that these questions are put in the e-news this week for you to read them and to ponder them and to have an idea where you want to see the church going as we begin the re-entry process. But there's one thing for certain. We have got to let go of the past. And we have to look at the new future that lays before us. We've got to let go. You see, this future will be exciting if we allow it. It's like the words of Joshua and Caleb as they enter into the promised land. Or are we going to be like the ten of the spies that were too afraid to venture into something new? You see, God gives us the strength if we're willing to accept it. You and I, Salem, are we going to have the faith that we need to face this uncertain time, to be able to step out in faith, faith of the unknown, to trust and to know that God will be there with us as we cross over into this new promised land, to cross over into this new normal that has been given to us. We did not ask for it. We did not seek it. But yet it is ours to embrace. Ours to embrace as a new opportunity to be in ministry. For us to let go of what seems comfortable and to embrace a new future a new and exciting future for our church, for our faith, and for our community. Are you willing to let go? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.